folk started whispering about Hazel, about how she could find cursed jewels just by walking down the street. These days only out-of-towners came to visit her mother, and not so many of them either. Hazel's mom had become short-tempered. She gave Hazel resentful looks. Hazel climbed the stairs as quietly as she could in case her mother had a customer. In the club downstairs, the band was turn tuning their instruments. The bakery next door had started making benignments for tomorrow's morning, filling the stairwell with the smell of melting butter. When she got to the top, Hazel thought she heard two voices inside the apartment. But when she peeked into the parlor, her mother was sitting alone at the seance table, her eyes closed as if in a trance. Hazel had seen her that way many times, pretending to talk to spirits for her clients, but not ever when she was by herself. Queen Marie had always told Hazel that her Grigri was a bunk and hokum. She didn't really believe in charms or fortune telling her ghosts. She was just a performer, like a singer or an actress, doing a show for money. But Hazel knew her mother did believe in some magic. Hazel's curse wasn't hokum. Queen Marie just didn't want to think of it as her fault, that somehow she had made Hazel the way she is. It was your blasted father, Queen Marie would grumble in her darker moods, coming here in his fancy silver and black suit. The one time I actually summon a spirit, and what do I get? Fulfills my wish and ruins my life. I should have been a real queen. It's his fault you turn out this way. She would never explain what she meant, and Hazel had learned not to ask about her father. It just made her mother angrier. As Hazel watched, Queen Marie muttered something to herself. Her face was calm and relaxed. Hazel was struck by how beautiful she looked, without her scowl and the creases in her brow. She had a lush mane of golden brown hair like Hazel's, and the same dark complexion, brown as a roasted coffee bean. She wasn't wearing the fancy saffron robes or gold bangles she wore to impress her clients, just a simple white dress. Still, she had a regal air, sitting straight and dignified in her gilded chair as if she really were a queen. You'll be safe there, she murmured, far from the gods. Hazel stifled a scream. The voice coming from her mother's mouth wasn't hers. It sounded like an older woman's. Its tone was soft and soothing, but also commanding, like a hypnotist giving orders. Queen Marie tensed. She grimaced in her trance, then spoke in her normal voice. Too far, too cold, too dangerous. He told me not to. The other voice responded. What has he ever done for you? He gave you a poisoned child. But we can use our gift for food. We can strike back at the gods. You will be under my protection in the north, far from the gods' domain. I make you my son, your protector. You'll live like a queen at last. Queen Marie winced. But what about Hazel? Then her face contorted into a sneer. Both voices spoke in unison, as if they found something to agree on. A poisoned child. Hazel fled downstairs, her pulse racing. At the bottom, she ran into a man in a dark suit. He gripped her shoulders with strong, cold fingers. Easy, child. Hazel noticed the silver ring on his finger, then the strange fabric of his suit. In the shadows, the solid black wool seemed to shift and boil, forming images of faces in agony, as if lost souls were trying to escape from the folds of his clothes. His tie was black with platinum stripes. His shirt was tombstone gray his face. Hazel's heart nearly leapt out of her throat. His skin was so white it looked almost blue, like cold milk. He had a flap of greasy black hair. His smile was kind enough, but his eyes were fiery and angry, full of mad power. Hazel had seen that look in the newsreels at the movie theater. This man looked an awful lot like Adolf Hitler. He had no mustache, but otherwise he could have been Hitler's twin, or his father. Hazel tried to pull away. Even when the man let go, she couldn't seem to move. Her eyes froze her in, his eyes froze her in place.